Welcome back, my fellow duplicants, to Oxygen Not Included. Now, in one of my previous videos here, the automated storage and retrieval system for gas and liquid systems, I created this little loop right here that stacked gas or liquid packs on top of each other uh, so that they took up less space inside the pipe as they were running through the system. Now, that has a fair number of good uses that you can use inside your base, and it also spurred a lot of, lot of responses of different arrangements that people are using to stack the gas on top of each other. So, okay, so just for a reference here, this was the arrangement I used in my last setup here. So it's five tiles long, three tiles wide. You can see how this works. Um, as the gas flows in, it goes across the bridge, comes back around, and once this overfills right there, then it heads on over and, and actually hits this gas pipe element sensor, which activates the gas shutoff valve and the gas flows out. So this next arrangement comes from D34. And there are also some other comments talking about using gas reservoirs and liquid reservoirs to stack things to one kilogram each, because as it flows out, it's going to flow out at its maximum rate, uh, so long as there's enough in the tank for that to happen. So in this arrangement here, you can see that the gas is flowing in and we have a couple different bridges, so there's an overflow detection loop on this. So just to run through this, the gas is flowing in here and going into the tank, and then it fills up to the point where it is over full, and then that loop runs out over here to a gas pipe element sensor. Now in this arrangement here, the gas pipe element sensor was before the bridge. I kind of just modified that a little bit um, because it would detect it on the front and back just to kind of shut things off. This here is a little bit more simple in that all you use is a gas pipe element sensor to detect the type of gas you have, which is oxygen, and then it'll stack it up into one kilogram units as it flows out. The cool thing here is that if you were to lose power, the system doesn't back up because it just starts to fill the tank up. So that's pretty cool um, in that it's kind of safe if you were to lose power. So if we let this run, fairly quickly for a while you can see that there's just a bunch of oxygen and it's just building up and up and up and up inside this reservoir. Alright, so that's a really good example of how we can combine the tank, the overflow, and whatnot to combine everything into one kilogram and move on. So these are all using the same sort of methods such as uh, what I would call kind of a gatekeeper uh, arrangement in that the gas shutoff valve stops the flow long enough to build up a certain amount of pressure and then it lets it loose. So there's a, a many more different arrangements here just to kind of give you a quick couple examples here. So this arrangement down here is from Griminer Jack. And you can see that right there. Uh, so how this one works is very similar to the, how the arrangement above it actually works in that the gas is flowing in, in this case at 400 grams per second across this bridge. So it builds up a little bit of gas there and then flows past that. And then you can see we have a sensor right there to detect it. Um, and then the gas flows out right there. So organic robotics has another arrangement here, and this one is more in line, but uses kind of a different arrangement of signals. So the gas in this case is flowing in, carbon dioxide at 100 grams per second. It flows in until we meet the sensor here, and then at that point we use a filter gate to kind of meter the flow out. So this one operates on a very regular interval in that, you know, the gate only remains open for so long. And you can kind of control that depending on how big a loop you have before it. So if you wanted to build up a fairly large charge here and then release it for, I don't know, 20, 30 seconds, this might be a loop that you could use. This next arrangement comes from Saturnus over on the forums, and he saw the video and he's like, here's a really good arrangement for this. So check this one out. This is pretty slick. It has a couple of bridges right here that are kind of stacked right next to each other, and then about three tiles worth of gas pipe right there. So um, this is how this one works. So you can see that the gas is flowing in and it skips over this spot right there and into that spot right there um, and then starts to build up gas. And then once this is overfilled right here, the gas moves from this spot to there and that's where the sensor detects it. Now there was one thing that he was talking about right here and that was using a temp sensor and not, it not being able to detect single packets. I've tried the temp sensor and I just wasn't able to get it to work. Uh, I think there might have been some recent changes and whatnot to the whole thing. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe you guys can let me know down there in the description if you can get the temp sensor to work. But for right now, I'm using just the gas pipe element sensor because I know what kind of gas is going to be in here, which could potentially cause problems with all of these arrangements if you have a mixed gas going into them. There is an additional clever thing that's going on here, and that is that the 
gas pipe element sensor is placed on the end of a bridge. And that was something that I never did for whatever reason. I think it's because I wasn't able to put a element sensor on the end of one of these valves. So I kind of thought, okay, it probably shouldn't be on the end of a bridge. Um, but now that we've made it through a couple of updates in the game, we've gone through two quality of life things, I'd say, okay, well, it's fair game at this point. So that's actually why I changed this arrangement right up here, just to kind of simplify that just a little bit. Um, and that was what I learned from Saturnus's post right there. So that's actually really quite useful uh, when you stop to think about it, because that opens up uh, a fair bit more options of what you can do with a sensor if you can place it right on the end of those bridges. But as you've seen, there's other ways around that same thing right there. So if it is removed from the game at some point, there's another arrangement for that. Now in the theme of doing the same thing, but in many different ways, I rearranged this a little bit, just to kind of change it up a little bit. And what I've noticed is that it has a different pattern on how it actually pumps the gas out. And it actually operates more frequently than the one above it, even though the flow into it is the same. Just kind of interesting how that all, all works out. So there's so many different ways to kind of, again, do the same sort of thing, but differently. Okay, so so far all of these arrangements that I've looked at thus far work using a gas shutoff valve and then a sensor that's meant to release that pressure down the line. There are, however, some other arrangements that might actually work to increase the pressure within the pipe within a certain range of flow, or potentially they might just work all together without any automation to begin with, which would make it pretty handy in that you don't need as much research in order to make the parts, and you don't need refined metals. So let's take a look at some of those. Okay, so this next arrangement here comes from Mongo, and you can kind of see how that's working right there. So one kilogram is moving out, and then it kind of tick tocks back and forth. But in this case, it just kind of is doubling the actual flow that's coming out of it for whatever reason. So there might be some other arrangements that we can do here to kind of give the gas more options as it's exiting this so that it can stack up even more gas. So you can see here that the gas is now being stacked up three to one. So 100's coming in, 300's going out. Just weird. So this next arrangement comes from Neves, and it really starts to hit on that idea of if we can move gas around and kind of slow it down within the pipe, it will stack up before it exits whatever kind of crazy arrangement we come up with here. So in this arrangement here, it goes from anywhere from doubling to quadrupling uh, the packet size. So depending on how this is flowing in, if it's flowing in roughly at 500 grams, then it should pretty much always give you uh, one kilogram out. But it, again, this really just depends on what the flow is running into it. So if we were to bring in bigger chunks here, you're going to see that this is 400 and this is going to slow down quite a bit. So you can see we're now getting one kilogram chunks out pretty much. Or, so you can see here that this is giving me fairly big chunks that are on the way out, but it doesn't necessarily work for me. It did, however, spur the ideas of what I could potentially do to really double or triple or quadruple or whatever the, the flow that's running through that. So here's where I really jumped into the deep end and just started playing around with a lot of different arrangements, trying to come up with a way to compress the gas always into one kilogram tiles without restricting the flow and without using any sensors. And I, there's got to be an arrangement that works, okay? So <laughs> in, the, in the theme of confusing the gas on the way out, this is one arrangement that I... I came across here. I didn't see it posted anywhere, but I'm sure it's probably not unique uh, as there's so many different ways to do things. But you can see that the gas flows in and down and then uh, it catches it on the way out. So this is always ending up one kilogram right there, but you can see it's kind of uh, kind of slow. So what happens when we restrict the flow to something like, uh, I don't know, 100 grams a second? Well, you can see in this arrangement here, it seems to be working perfectly in that 100 grams is flowing in, but one kilogram tiles are flowing out. And this is doing it all without any sensors. So here's where things get really weird. It works sometimes when you look at it, but does it survive reloading the game? Does it survive relaunching the game? And that's actually where a lot of these arrangements fall apart, at least so far in my testing. So I just reloaded the game. Mm -hmm. Oh, oh. Oh, and now we're back down to tripling. <laughs> what? So here's, an, so here's the weird thing. No matter what I tried to do here, at this point, 
it pretty much only wants to triple. So how do I get this to go beyond three? Well, one thing I've found is if I do this number, uh, it's definitely kind of does some more weird stuff with the gas as it's trying to figure out where to go. And then bigger chunks leave. So now I'm getting six times the packet stacking. Now, as you can imagine, you can play around with this in so many different ways, but it doesn't, not all of them actually work in your favor. But this arrangement here has reliably given me a six times stacking. Okay, so at this point I have tested many different arrangements and I've yet to find anything that works better than this uh, without using any sensors. And it's kind of a weird arrangement, so you might just wanna, maybe you'll find that useful. I'm sure there's something out there uh, because I've seen some really promising results. But the thing is, is it, is it promising results the first time you set it up? Does it work when you look away from it? Does it work when you reload the game? Uh, there's a many different ways that something like this can start to give you a little bit of heartburn. So, so far, this has been the best thing that I found, but trust me, I've tried about 20 different arrangements thus far. Now, if I could have your attention for just a moment here, there's a new bundle that dropped on Humble for books about computer science right here. This is pretty thick, pretty deep topics right here as far as a lot of different references of useful information for those of you that are really deep into programming. I know a lot of you actually uh, do look into that programming stuff, and I'll be honest, a lot of it's over my head. Um, however, I am making good use of the last bundle that is still available that is as far as programming the Raspberry Pi and Arduino. I actually got that thing set up and I was doing some sensors the other day. I got a whole project there and I'm just about ready to make it. Anyhow, uh, this is a great reference if you guys wanted to check it out there. There's many other bundles down there in the description below. If you use the link in the description below, you'll notice that you'll see Brothgar right here partnering with me, uh, or you might just see it right down here if you see where your money goes as well. Not only does this go to support this channel, but it also goes to support a couple of great charities. In this case, St. Jude's Children Research Hospital is the one that I choose, um, and then Python Software Foundation as well. So if this looks useful to you, thank you so much for your support, guys. So there you have it, guys. Many different ways to stack packets of gas into their maximum size before shipping it through the rest of the pipe. It also works with liquid as well, since it is the same system. It's really awesome to see how many people were commenting in the comment section below and on Discord sharing your ideas. And I think that just really makes this whole thing work so much better uh, because it provides a lot of really useful references for all of us, just like we see with programming references. As far as people commenting on the internet, here we have it, same sort of thing here in the game. So absolutely awesome to see that happen and happen in real time. And I look forward to exploring many different other things that we can solve together here in the future. If this looks like the channel for you, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And, and once again, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are absolutely awesome. As always, guys, stay awesome. Peace. Brothgar out.